Hi folks, it's Chris and Ashley here with our King Rat Snake. It's uh, Laffy Carinata, our King Rat Snake. We haven't named him yet, you know, because uh, we haven't figured out his personality just yet, except that he's very snappy. His and, name is Mean Snake. Yeah, that's that's what we've been calling him as of lately. Or I want to I want to name him Douchebag or something because all all he seems to want to do is uh, turn around and, and bite you in the finger. Um, but as you can tell, uh, he, he's very different from uh, our, our other snakes in regards to personality. And you know, most people have said that they they don't make the most uh, ideal pet. You know, because they're they're a little bit persnickety, as as someone had um, had called him. And I, I think it's it's probably a, an understatement to say the least. They're, their, their instinct to protect themselves and to uh, attack is unlike any other normal snake that we've ever seen um, in terms of uh, pythons, uh, boas, king snakes, milk snakes, and, and regular king snakes, that, that is. Sorry, I hate to interject, but you yeah. might want to move it out now. Sure. Uh, Do you see how fast he was? Yep, did you see his, his, protective, uh, his protective instinct to... to turn around and, and strike at whatever's trying to uh, or to attack him or what he perceives as being attacked it's it's a very strong instinct and we hope that we can handle him some more and so that as, as an adult he he doesn't um, have that type of reaction we, we actually just saw a, a, a recent um, video a movie on on cable and uh, about an, a person over in India who's caring for uh, who's caring for animals, and one of the one of the snakes that they happened to find, you know, it was actually what we believe to be a king rat snake, and there was an inexperienced um, volunteer who was helping out, helping to to bag the king snake, and the king rat snake turned around and bit her in the face. And, you know, so we're hoping that we, we handle this king rat snake uh, early on so that he doesn't exhibit that type of um, protective stance and, and try to attack us every single moment. He's that, actually very well behaved right now, but we've been working with him for a half right. hour so far. And, and as you can tell, he's, he's very inquisitive and he, he spooks easily. So we're we're just trying to sort of figure out that the best way to handle him. We we've noticed that if you if you ply your fingers on him with too much pressure, he gets very angry, and you know he starts to to wiggle his tail very much like a a rattlesnake, as as a warning sign. And his he must to an incredible extent. I've never seen a snake musk this much. Even, right. Um, with a king snake. Right, and I, and I think it smells like burning rubber. Uh, Ashley has a, it smells a, a different like opinion. Perfume. Yeah. So she, I think she has a, a better opinion of it. I, I think it, it really stinks, but you get used to it after all. But um, as you can tell... Stop getting my ugly pants in here. <laughs> sorry. We're in our pajamas in our bed, sorry. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just hanging out. Uh, as you can tell, he's, he's absolutely beautiful, though, if you can look at the his coloring and his patterns, which you know will change when he's an adult, but... You know, we're we're trying to sort of uh, in, enjoy him at, yeah, at least he, like while he's while he's tiny. Notice how half of his pattern is one way, and then half is more just stripes. Right, uh, about halfway down his uh, his body, he turns from oof, that was spooky. He turns from uh, having sort of like a uh, the these spotted patterns to to having sort of like a almost like Are you a looking at the camera to, right to almost having like a like a, a whip tail lizard stripe going down or like a garter snake stripe going down the back end did and, you get that yep yeah, that that was that was him striking we're, we're trying to get more videos of a laffy carinata out so that you know more people discover this you know very interesting somewhat violent snake yeah they're not a beginner snake yeah, that's we, for sure yeah we, we 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 definitely won't vouch for the fact that you know like pythons large pythons they're they're fairly easy to handle king snakes are fairly this easy is actually to handle. the scariest snake we've had out yeah. of all four rat, rat snakes. Rat snakes are, are fairly easy to handle. This guy, regular rat snakes, yeah. Alafia yeah. obsoleta, obsoleta. Yep, regular. This this guy, not so much. Uh, that's Maybe a, you should zoom out a little bit. It's it zoomed out right all the way right at this point. Ow! Oof. <laughs>
<laughs> there he is. And That's I, my dramatic response yeah. to him biting me. It didn't hurt that much. It's just shocking. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's it for now. Hey guys, uh, it's Chris and Ashley again. Um, we're just hanging out with our Tegu Lucky. He's, uh, a, a blue Tegu, but I, I think there's some debate as to whether or not that's really anything different from a, a black and white Tegu. Uh, yeah. We call him Tegi. He's, he's, you know, it's obviously close to, to winter time over here in New Jersey. And uh, he's been somewhat brumating for you know, for the, the past week or two. Um, sometimes we we take him out in the mornings and, and we'll let him hang out in our bed and he'll fall asleep. And you know, wherever he falls asleep when we come back from work, he ends up uh, in the exact same spot. So you know, as far as we can guess, he's been in general, he's been sleeping maybe, if we had to guess, maybe 12 hours a day, 14 hours straight, if not more. He pretty much slept 24 hours last yeah, night. Yeah, um, uh, we, you know, we, we are members of, of Tegu Talk, and as far as I know, in terms of the blue Tegu, so long as uh, Lucky is uh, entirely pure blue Tegu, which we believe, He's probably, I would have to guess, the, the largest tegu, blue tegu in North America. And I, I know that's a bold statement. He's, he's coming in at around 15 pounds. And as far as, uh, we haven't seen a, a blue tegu uh, on the forums or, or on YouTube or anywhere else larger than him. So, Although he's not that blue, so... Yeah. His parents are fairly blue. There's some, his parents were, um, if, if you guys are familiar with Dave Dragon, uh, he's a moderator on Tegu Talk. Uh, if you've seen any of his blues, his blue is actually under um, UVB light. The, uh, they fluoresce pretty, pretty good. They fluoresce blue. But um, you know, with, with Lucky, his blues come out in, in the sun and, and you know, immediately after he sheds, but he, he's not quite blue. So, so there goes, you know, going back to that argument as to whether or not um, blue tegus are really something different or are they just, you know, regional smaller versions of a, a regular black and white tegu. Not that, you know, not that either is, isn't special because he's probably my, my favorite reptile out of, um, out of everyone we have and you know he's he just has really the, the sweetest demeanor I mean he's he's really big most people who meet him um, are alarmed that we have um, a reptile so large just walking around our house casually uh, I know my brother was in shock the first time he saw us um, open his cage we have a we have an eight-foot boa master cage that sits on the floor and where, where that Tiggy uh, sleeps in and the first time my brother saw him, we opened up the cage, and uh, our Lucky popped out and started um, flicking his tongue. My brother was a little alarmed by that, and, and uh, not having seen a, a monitor this close before. And then our, our, our Tegu casually strolled over to our, our tiled bathroom and did his, uh, did his thing, and then walked back into his cage and went back to sleep. So, uh, you know, he, he's potty trained, and I did tell that to my brother and his wife, Julie, and, and they didn't believe me until they, they saw it with their own eyes. And, you know, as far as we're concerned, you know, tigers are, are very special animals. They're, they're absolutely sweet, and they're, they're just one of the, the nicest reptiles that you could keep, you know. They, they should have more keepers who, who actually take care of their tigers. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I look on Craigslist, and it's unfortunate. But we see people trade their trade their their reptiles like like their baseball cards or something like that. You know, they they want to trade a, a tegu for an aki, or or they want some ball pythons, and you know, for a tegu. And and you know, it's really unfortunate that that people treat animals this way. You know, and uh, you know, not to get into the to the the entire industry of um reptile keeping and so on and so forth but there are really people out there who shouldn't have you know who shouldn't be keeping these magnificent animals because they they just look at him as an oddity as opposed to to maybe a family member or like a, a cherished pet i think that's all that i really have to to, to comment for right now yeah he's he's just really beautiful
And again, sorry, we're still in our pajamas, just <laughs> hanging out in the bed with the... Alright, so this is Chuck, the Chuck Walla. He's a little bit camera shy. Now, the lighting in here does not do him justice. He has some great, beautiful colors. Now, by now, you're probably wondering what's wrong with his face. Well, when we first got him, we were told that he was captive bred, but I kind of think that wasn't exactly true. Um, we had a month of issues with him, which involved him rubbing his nose so fiercely against things that he just completely messed up the front of his face. So, it's been treated with, um... Silvadine ointment and he's been into the vet several times and his condition is being monitored um, He lost a lot of weight during that period too. He didn't want to eat or anything uh, But now he's eating well every single day and uh, he's a lot less dehydrated So it's going to be a long process getting his face to look you know somewhat decent It has to scab over and then he needs a few sheds, but it'll never be completely um It'll never be back to how it used to be. It's always going to be a scar, unfortunately. Um, and that is one of the inherent risks of taking chuckwallas and other animals out of the wild and then trying to sell them in the animal industry, in the pet industry. But other than that, he's a cute, spunky little guy. He's a little bit cold right now. He just woke up. Um... These guys are um, in the Guanaday family. They primarily feed on vegetables and um, dark greens and, and other vegetables and then a little bit of fruit. Um, occasionally we give him super worms, which he does love, to just try to get some weight on him. As you'll notice, he's really skinny right now. Um, but it's not really good to feed any sort of iguana, anyone in the iguana family, uh, too much animal protein because it's been proven to mineralize their organs. So you really need to limit it. Chuck. His name is Chuck, the Chuckwalla. Yeah, not too original there, huh? Right now he's in a 4 by 3 by 2 um, Boa Master cage that we got on Chrysler for 100 bucks. It's a pretty good deal and he seems to be doing much better in there. Um, originally we had him in a 40 gallon breeder as a temporary fix and that was just a disaster. Boa cages are pretty good. They, I think they have only one downfall, but the, the downfall is pretty serious. And, and that's that they, they weigh about a thousand pounds each. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but they're, they're very heavy compared to, to say, a vision cage or a cage made out of plastic. We'll, we'll probably take videos of the cages at some point so, so you can get a, a, a look-see at, at all of their housing. Yeah, we're going to probably upgrade everyone to vision cages. At some point, and they're they, Bowmaster stacks, but if you stack so many pounds on top of each other, you're gonna lose your floor. So um, vision cages are much lighter, and they stack well. So we're probably gonna upgrade. Anyway, that is Chuck Walla. Thanks. Bye.